you will be able to turn this into this. What you will need for this project are Amico Class Pack opalescent glazes. They come in six per pack and it's, it's very gorgeous glazes. I don't know if I can, you guys can see it. Um, beautiful colors. There's um, six colors in each pack. And then fire to hone 05. The next thing you will need is this pack of deluxe pottery tools. You will need a bag of clay. There's the Blick Low Fire Red Clay. A tube of any kind. Um, you can use a paper towel tube or you can use a PVC pipe like this. Um, it doesn't really matter. Just think about the shape of what you want to make or the shape of the vase that you would like to have. Some newspaper, a rolling pin, and some tape. All right, let's get started. Okay, now hopefully you can see better. <laughs> so we're going to take our wire tool, this wire tool here, and we're going to cut our clay like this. Just straight across. Now we have a piece of clay. Okay, make sure to cover up the clay. And we're gonna move the clay over so that we'll have room. So you're going to take your clay. This clay is a bit sticky. So while you're working, just make sure to lift up the clay as you work. So I went and got a, something called a bat, which you can use any type of piece of wood because the clay was so wet. And it just helps to dry out the clay a little bit as you're working with it. We're gonna peel it back up and go over like this. And you're gonna to try to get as thin as possible. You can use dowels if you want so that it could be even. Doesn't necessarily have to be totally even. This is a dowel and it's um, basically when you roll out your clay, you can put both pieces of your dowels here and the dowel just makes sure that your clay stays at one level. And these dowels are one fourth, but we're not gonna do dowels today. We're gonna wing it. <laughs> so once your clay is rolled out to where you would like it, then we're going to think about textures. Hi guys, so there's different things that you can do with texture and you can use different texture mats and different, um, surfaces to create texture onto your pieces. The reason why I didn't put any texture mats in the um, beginning of the video of things that you would need is because I wanted you to kind of use your imagination and think about um, texture and how texture can be transferred to clay. And the beautiful thing about clay is that clay has memory. So it just captures like any type of indentation, any type of like nuance that you press into the clay, it will capture it and it will stay. <laughs> so you have to kind of be careful. So this is one texture mat that I like messing with is a wood grain texture mat. It's really fun and interesting, but it isn't natural, which is kind of a problem. Um, one of the things I... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> One of the things that I like to use is this wood grain, this real old piece of wood. And I use this texture, which I think I'm gonna to use today because I like the ridges in the um, piece. You can tell I've used it for many years. But like I said, today I am gonna stick with this. I want something very rough and very natural looking. And when I use my glazes, I have this idea of like the glaze colors just cascading onto each other, kind of melting and, and blending into each other to make something very like earthy and natural. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and press this into the clay and let's see how it looks. Okay, so we're gonna press this into the clay. Ooh, look at that. And I'm just like kind of rocking it back and forth like this, just to 
kind of make different indentations, even going on top of the previous indentation. So it doesn't look as if it's been done before, you know, like you're just using different sides and different pieces of wood. And this is why I didn't want to measure out the clay, um, the size or the, um, use dowels to measure out the clay because if I were to do that, then it might be a little too thin. And then when I wrapped around this piece, I f it might um, have little gaps in it, in the clay. So now what we're gonna do is lift up the clay just to make sure it's on there. It's not stuck to the, to the bottom. And next, we're going to move this aside take this piece and our tape and our newspaper so that it sticks to the newspaper and not to the form. So just go around like this. Make sure it's nice and neat. Then we'll take our tape and tape the newspaper to itself. This is very important <laughs> because if I were to tape it to this PVC pipe, if I were to tape it to the PVC pipe, you wouldn't be able to slip this off. You, the clay will probably adhere to the newspaper, but not adhere to the clay pipe because we have used print on it. And now, here is the fun part. I'm going to take the clay, flip it over, take this piece of newspaper, newspaper cladded vase shape, roll it onto the piece like this, and then roll all the way around. And then when you get to this point where the clay meets, I want you to take the clay, Try not to pull it too tight, have a little bit of gaps, and we're just gonna press it together. Easy peasy, just like this. I'm gonna take some pieces off. Just kind of here to clay, like so. And also at the bottom, we're gonna adhere to clay like this. And I'll show you how we can patch this up so that there's not any gaps or anything. And you can tell it kind of looks like a seam. And I'll show you how we can make it not look like a seam anymore. Here, I'll step over here. That way you can see. <laughs> so basically all I did was smooth out the clay like this. And then we're going to take our texture tool and go right back over where we smoothed out. And it doesn't even look like there was an area or a little seam. It's really great. Now we're going to get this tool, which is a needle tool, and we're going to go all the way around the bottom of our piece. And this is so that we'll have a flush bottom. And there we go. Now stand up your vase and look at that. Look how cool that is. So you can like rotate your vase and see how it looks. Maybe you want more texture. And also you can go to the top and kind of play around a little bit. I don't want my top to be perfect. So I'm just going to try to kind of make it kind of saggy looking and interesting. Now, what I'm going to do, make sure my bottom looks okay, which it does. I'm going to take a piece of clay, kind of roll it around in my hands a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll out the bottom for this piece. Just roll out your bottom like so. Peel it up. Peel it up. There we go. 
Perfect, that seems like the right size. And then we're going to take our piece and sit it right on top. And we're going to trace around the bottom and then I'm going to take that off and then we'll just blend it up like this. I did leave a little bit of overhang, maybe around a fourth of an inch of an overhang so that I could blend the two bottoms together. Now, you have to wait a couple hours so that things could harden a bit. And you can kind of play with it a little bit, make the bottom a little bit more saggy, a little bit more interesting. There we are. So we're gonna wait a little bit for things to dry and then we'll come back, take this piece off and let it dry and then we'll fire it and glaze it. Okay, I'm back. It's been a couple of minutes and I think the clay has hardened enough so that we can take out the tube. So this is why I told you not to tape the inner part of the tube to the newspaper. Because now look, you see how the clay is stuck to the newspaper and you can't really get it out. But if you have taped the tape to the newspaper and not to the tube, voila, it easily slides off and you can easily get your newspaper off. Isn't that amazing? I think it's so cool. So now I'm going to the inside and I'm going to look and make sure that everything is sealed properly. So basically you're going to take this tool that came in your toolkit and just run it along the inside just to make sure all your seams are complete. You're gonna run it along the bottom edge where the sides of your clay connected to the bottom of the clay, your clay bottom. I think I do want to work on my edge a little bit more. So I'm just going to very carefully cut off a little bit and just kind of pinch it a little bit like this. I think it's kind of cool. Let's see? Yeah. So it still isn't perfect, but it's, it's kind of still a little organic looking and interesting. And that's all for now. So now we're going to let this completely dry, fire it in the kiln, and then glaze it. Now that the glazes are out of the kiln, we can now add glaze. The first glaze I'm going to use, uh, Sapphire Blue from Amico. We're going to use that. And then we're also using Amico Opalescent. And the reason why I love these glazes is that it has a beautiful color when it's applied to red clay. So we're going to dab it on like this, make it kind of thick. And I think what I want to do is I want to mix both colors together, like so. To the piece, make sure to get into the crevices. And it's gonna be really beautiful because it's going to run. Just mix it like so. And now I'm going to go into the inside of the cup. And I think I'm just gonna stick the blue bell on the inside. And then now we're going to take it to the kiln and fire it to cone 04. 